Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Wayne Yancey Field here at Forest High School. It's tonight the hosting Forest High School Wildcats will take on the traveling Crosstown Rivals in the Vanguard Knights. Hello, everybody. I'm Bridger Webb coming to you live and in color from Wayne Yancey Field right behind home plate as we get ready to go for another excellent night of high school baseball action. Now, for those who don't know, here in the Central Florida, Marion County part of the area, this is the heated rivalry of all heated rivalries. This is the Green Bay Packers and Chicago Bears. This is the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens. And for you baseball fans, this is the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox. This is the game of all games, and we're ready to go for another edition of this great crosstown rivalry. Now the Wildcats coming into tonight's game with a record of 10 and 8. Currently they're on a three-game losing streak right now. Their last was a loss 14 to 6 to North Marion High School this past Tuesday. Meanwhile, the Knights of Vanguard High School coming into tonight's game with a better record of 13 and 6. And right now they are 2 and 0 in their league. Their last game was a 3 to 2 win last night over Bellevue High School from just up the road. And the Knights currently have one up over the Wildcats from their last matchup. Earlier in the season, the Knights were able to take Forrest into extra innings and beat them 2-1 to one after eight innings. But folks, we're all warmed up. We're getting ready to go. And making his way onto the plate to lead off the game tonight is going to be the second baseman, number two, Adam Oxidine for the Knights. Ty Moody on mound tonight for the Wildcats, and the first pitch is going to be hit and fouled away. That's going to be foul strike number one. Moody on mound now sends it in. This ball will stay in the strike zone. This will be strike number two. Moody now with the wind up, sends it. This ball will be just a smidge high. This is going to be ball number one now. Second baseman Oxidine gets set to go for the one-two. So Moody looks to pick up his first strikeout of the night. The windup swings. And it looks like Oxidine's going to get hit a little bit by this pitch that will send him to first base on a walk hit by the pitch. Looks like it clipped the elbow a little bit. This will make way for number eight, the shortstop for the Knights, Cody Antonucci. Moody gets set to go. Looking to shake off the hit that he just gave Oxidine. Literal hit. As Antonucci is going to bunt this one. And it will not be in time as Antonucci is going to get uh, grounded out there from first. Great play by the Wildcat defense. However, Oxidine will advance over to second base. So Antonucci's bunt attempt is going to leave him out. And the Knights have one away. Runner on second is Brian Long, the center fielder, number 15, coming onto the plate now for the Knights. When he gets set, sends it. This ball will stay in the strike zone. This will be strike number one. Kind of a low sinker that Moody threw there. So this will be strike number one. This ball will stay floating just outside the strike zone. This will be ball number one, and we're at a 1-1 count. Moody gets set, sends it, and this one will stay inside just low in the strike zone. That'll be strike number two, and we have a one-two count now. Center fielder Long's got a runner on second. One out away here at the top of the first. And this will be it hit and fouled away. Long will stay alive. He took a big swing on that one, was able to get just a piece of it. 
as it flies back behind him into the fence. Wildcats tonight are rocking their throwback uniforms. They have the green tops with the white cursive script and the white pants. A little bit of a new look for the Wildcats this week. Meanwhile, the Vanguard Knights are rocking their away uniforms right now with the red tops, white bottoms. Kind of the off-white helmets, too, as Long hits this one out to second baseman. Loses a grip of it. And is able to get the runner on first, but not the one on third. As Brian Long is going to be out number two, making way for Carson Lindsay, the designated hitter, number 20, coming onto the plate now. Adam Oxidine is able to advance from second over to third. So a runner in scoring position early on in tonight's game. Moody gets set. First one to go sent way outside. This will be ball number one. Vanguard coming into tonight's game 2-0 in their league. They're first right now in Division 5A, District 5. This one is going to be strike number one. Right now the Knights are ranked 208th in the state rankings and 29th right now in all of 5A baseball. This one's going to be hit and fouled away. This will be strike number two. Now to reiterate, in their last matchup between these two teams, the Vanguard Knights had one over the Wildcats. They beat them 2-1 to one in eight innings. Took them one extra inning to get the job done. This ball will float just a little too low. This will be ball number two. We're back to an even count at two. As the designated hitter has a runner on third and two away here at the top of the first. As he smacks this one over to the third baseman. Is able to launch it over, and this will be in time to retire the side. Great defensive play by the Wildcats as they were able to just get one, uh, one runner on third and leave him stranded as they put the three away. And we'll get ready to go to lead off the bottom of the second with Bradley White the second, Aaron Stelaganis, and Tyler Thomas leading off the inning for the Wildcats. And, folks, it's a beautiful Friday night, so you know what that means. It is Fun Fact Friday. In the middle of each inning, we will give you one fun fact, probably something that you've never heard before. And leading off tonight for your fun fact, the brothers Aaron, both Hank and Tommy, have the most home runs by siblings at a whopping 768 home runs. Tommy Aaron only had 13. Meanwhile, Hank Aaron covered the other 755. That's your first fun fact of the night. Stick around for the middle of the second. We will give you another. Welcome back to Wayne Yancey Field, folks. You're getting ready to go to lead off the bottom of the first inning. The shortstop, number 17, Bradley White, the second, leading off the inning for the Wildcats. As the first pitch sent his way will be fouled back behind him over the dugout. Second pitch sent his way. Looks like it's going to be ball number one. We're at an even count at one. White smacks this one out to left field. Left fielder's chasing it down the side, and it's going to stay in play, but this is going to pick up some extra bases for the shortstop, and this is going to be a double for the shortstop, Bradley White the second. Left fielder out there was putting on the Jets, but not able to get enough as that ball was just hit a little bit beyond him. And the Wildcats record their first hit of the night. Third baseman, number five, Aaron Stelaganis, on plate now for the Wildcats. Coming into tonight's game with an average of 333 and seven RBIs as he has a runner in scoring position. And this first ball is going to be a little inside. Nearly got hit by that one. But this will be ball number one. Stelaganis gets set to go. This ball will stay in the strike zone. And this will be strike number one. And the Wildcats coming into tonight's game, they are one and five in their league play. 
They're right now sixth in 6A Division II. As Stella Gaines bunts this one away, and the catcher's not able to get a grip of it, and this is going to advance Bradley White over to third, and Stella Gaines will pick up a hit over to first. The bunt attempt was successful, and the Knights pick up their first error of the night, so this will not be considered a hit. Appears that the catcher may have had a little bit of popcorn before in the game with the Butterfingers. As we get ready to go, and Stella Gaines is out stealing second. And looks like he will be successful in the steal attempt. And just like that, the Wildcats have a runner on second and third with no outs here at the bottom of the first. And it looks like Tyler Thomas is going to get hit on this one. So this will send over to first base. And we have bases loaded here, folks. Making way now for Tyler Rogers, the first baseman. Rogers coming into tonight's game with an average of 304 with one home run. Can he pick up home run number two for a grand slam? We will find out here right now as the Knights are in a little bit of a sticky situation as the first pitch will get sent just a bit high. This will be ball number one. And the Wildcats, like I was saying, are right now sixth in 6A Division two. as this one gets struck outside over the Knights' dugout. This will be considered strike one. Right now, the Wildcats are ranked 146th in the state of Florida, and they're 29th right now in 6A baseball. Looking to change their luck here is right now, like I said earlier, they are in a three-loss streak right now. This ball will be a little bit low and outside. Ball two. As Rodgers gets set for the 2-1. Got bases loaded, no outs at the bottom of the first as he smacks this one out to left center. And the center fielder is there to make the easy play, but the runner on third is going to check up. And this will send Bradley White the third on home, and the Wildcats will pick up the lead. They're leading 1-0 now, leaving the runners on first and second right where they're at. Making way now for Trevor Murray, the second baseman, number seven. He's got a runner on first and second and one out now at the bottom of the first. Then the Wildcats as a team have four home runs this season so far. Trevor Murray does have one of them. He's been a consistently good hitter for the Wildcats up to this point. As he gets a piece of this one, puts a little backspin on it just behind the catcher here. So he gets set now for the 0-1. This one will be just a little into the inside. Murray had to stick his chin out of the way of that one there. Nearly got hit by that one. So we'll get ready to go for the 1-1 now. An attempt to pick off Stella Gannis on second is unsuccessful. As Jake Tompkins, the pitcher for the Knights right now, looking to... Suddenly get two outs here for the Wildcats. Staleganis looking to steal from second. And he is successful as he nearly gets tagged out at third. He's able to slide in time. And the Wildcats now have runners on the corners. One out here at the bottom of the first. As Trevor Murray gets set to go for the one-two. Trevor Murray, the sophomore, with an average of 316. One home run, 11 RBIs. He's got a runner on the corners at the bottom of the first with only one away. He gets set for the 1-2. And the runner on first now is going to attempt to pick off at second. And Tyler Thomas will make his way from first over to second on a stolen base. Murray now gets set for the 
Now has a runner on second and third. As he'll take a chop at this one. This will be kind of piddled about there just on the outside of the third baseline. We'll get set to go again for the 2-2. Two -two. Again, runner on second and third. One away at the bottom of the first. Wildcats leading one to nothing right now over the Vanguard Knights. This ball will be low and outside. Catcher nearly didn't have a grip on that one. This will be ball three, and we have a full count. Jake Tompkins looking to come up with his first strikeout of the night. As he sends it, and it will not be so, as this is going to be a walk for Trevor Murray. And once again, the bases are loaded for the Wildcats. Head coach for the Knights are walking onto the plate right now, looking to have a little powwow with the pitcher, Jake Tompkins. Next on the plate is going to be the center fielder, senior number 24, Harrison Pesola. Coming in with an average of 318. He's got two RBIs, and he has a bases loaded situation. Only has one out right now, but the Knights are going to be setting up in double play defense here. So they're looking to kind of get themselves out of the sticky situation that they've created here. Wildcats are certainly looking to break their losing streak with a big win over their crosstown rivals. And they'll play Pesola's walkout music. A fire track from Eminem once more. As the first pitch sent his way, will be right down the middle, strike one. Second pitch sent his way, will be kind of popped up right to the pitcher. This is going to be an easy out. So Pesela comes up with the second out, making way for the designated hitter tonight, number 10, Ty Moody. Moody with only an average of 103 coming into tonight's game. Five RBIs. He has bases loaded and suddenly now two outs. As he would obviously hope to bring in one more with a big swing. Got him. Yes, sir. And this is going to be a little bit of a, an awkward situation here. The runner on first was looking to what looked like steal second, but... There was somebody on second, and he got caught stealing. So that's going to be out number three, and that will retire the side. The Knights are able to get themselves out of the sticky situation that they created with the bases loaded. So the Wildcats able to come up with one run off of one hit. The Knights pick up an error in that inning, so the Force Wildcats will lead one to nothing right now over the Vanguard Knights. We'll take a quick break, folks, and we will be right back. You're listening to Web Sports Broadcasting. Welcome back to Web Sports Broadcasting, folks, here at Wayne Yancey Field as tonight the Forest High School Wildcats taking on the Vanguard Knights. We get ready to go to lead off the top of the second. This is number five, Jake Tompkins, the pitcher, on plate now for the Knights. First pitch is, was going to be fouled away. This will be strike number one, so we get set for the 0-1. And this pitch is going to be just slow, and it'll clip the ankle of the pitcher, and this will send him over to first base on a walk. A hit by pitch, rather. So making way now will be the first baseman, number 16, Michael Long. Long right now has a runner on first. No outs here to lead off the top of the second. Ty Moody gets set. This is going to be bunted over to the first baseman. And the pitch and catch is going to be successful. What a great hustle by Ty Moody. Sprinting from the pitcher's mound over to the, the uh, first base. Tyler Rogers is there to uh, make an easy pitch and catch for the two. However, Jake Tompkins is going to advance over to second. Like 
We get set now, the left fielder number 12, Eddie Marquez. Marquez now has a runner on second and one away here at the top of the second. Knights are currently down, one nothing, as the first pitch will get fouled away. Right back behind us into the fence. Marquez gets set to go here for the 0-1. Moody keeping his eye on the runner on second. Sends it. That's right down the middle and strike number two. Ty Moody looking to come up with his first strikeout of the game. Calculated with the windup. Sends it. And this will be strike number three and strike strike number three and strike out number one for Ty Moody. Coming into the plate now will be at number eleven, the right fielder, Braden Ballard. Ballard has a runner on second and now two away here at the top of the second. Moody gets set, sends it. A big swing and a miss, strike number one from the right fielder. We get set for the 0-1 now. Ballard takes a step back. Reassess the situation, steps back in and we're ready to go. Moody gets set. Ballard steps back out, and we're ready to go. Moody's keeping an eye on that runner back behind him, Jake Tompkins on second. As the 0-1 is just low in the dirt, this will be ball number one. We're headed to even count here. We get set for the 1-1. A swing and a miss will send, not a miss, but <laughs> Tip is going to be uh, sent way over the fence. This will be the 1 2 now for the right fielder. On, Moody gets set on the mound. Wind up, sends it. Low and outside will be ball number two. Back in an even count. Ballard gets set for the 2-2. Has a runner advancing from second to third, but this is going to be strike number three and strikeout number two for the Wildcats. This will retire the side. Great pitching by Ty Moody to keep the Knights at bay. Comes up with two strikeouts and a great hustle from Ty Moody to uh, get the first out for the Wildcats as we get set to get ready for the bottom of the second. This will be Ty Moody, Connor DeGeorge, and Ryan Curtis leading off the inning for the Wildcats. But it is now time for your second fun fact of the night, folks. Did you know that the Minnesota Twins were the very first team named after an entire state? An interesting fun fact for you. That's your second fun fact for tonight's Fun Fact Friday. We'll have another one for you at the middle of the third. But we'll be right back, folks, for the bottom of the second. You're listening to Web Sports Broadcasting. Welcome back to Wayne Yancey Field, folks. We're getting ready to go for the bottom of the second. Is right now the designated hitter number 10 and pitcher tonight, Ty Moody, on plate now. First pitch sent his way was a ball, but he second pitch gets struck out to left field, and the left fielder is there to make an easy play. This will be out number one. Right. 
Left fielder number three, Connor DeGeorge, coming onto the plate now for Forrest. DeGeorge coming into tonight's game with an average of 158 with three RBIs. That first pinch will be in the strike zone. This will be strike number one for the left fielder to George. Second pitch will just be a smidge low. Third pitch will be just a little bit low as well. This will be ball two. Another low pitch in the dirt will be ball number three, and just like that, DeGeorge is way ahead of the count, 3-1 now. He's got one away, base is empty. As he'll tip this one just over the fence behind him here. And he's given himself now a full count. As Tompkins sends this one, this is gonna be smacked a little bit of a worm burner past second base. We'll send Connor to George on a single base hit. Right fielder number 12, Ryan Curtis now coming onto the plate for the Wildcats. Junior right fielder has an average coming into tonight's game with 125 as he bunts this one high and up. And the catcher is going to be there to make the great play for the Knights. That's number nine, Bobby Gattuso there, making the play. So Bradley White, the second, will come back for his second at bat. He had a double in the first. He was able to produce the only Wildcat run up to this point. He has a runner on first right now and two away at the bottom of the second. As the first pitch actually sent his way, it will be way high. This will be ball number one. The catcher attempt to pick off to George there on first. Unsuccessful. So White steps back into the box. We get ready to go. An attempt to steal. Got him. Yes. It looks like it's going to be in time, and Connor DeGeorge will get caught stealing. And just like that, the side is retired. Well, the Knights were able to come up with great defensive plays of their own, but still able to give up one hit. The Wildcats still lead 1-0 going into the top of the third. We get set to go here. We'll take a quick break, folks. Want to thank you for tuning in tonight on YouTube. You're watching Web Sports Broadcasting. I'm Bridger Webb coming to you live from Wayne Yancey Field here at Forest High School in beautiful Ocala, Florida. As tonight, the Vanguard Knights traveling into the Lions' den, or the Cats' den, so to speak, as they take on their crosstown rivals in the Forest High School Wildcats. We're at a packed house here. I'm looking around me. Their bleachers are packed. Everyone brought their chairs, and they're ready to, uh, to continue watching some great high school baseball as it's a close one right now going into the third. Wildcats up 1-0. We'll take a quick break, folks. We'll be right back. You're watching Web Sports Broadcasting. Welcome back to Wayne Yancey Field, folks. We're getting ready to lead off the top of the third inning. Come on, Bob. Bobby got two, got two so, excuse me, get set to go here for the Knights. First pinch will be fouled away behind him. He gets set now for the 0-1. Ty Moody with the windup and sends it. This is going to be super low. Super inside, rather. Come on, Bob. Catcher had to duck out of that one as we get set for the 1-1 now. Catcher calls time. He'll step out of the box real quick, reassess the situation. 
He gets set to go now for the 1-1. Moody with the windup and sends it. This will be just a hair low. He called ball number two. Come on, Bob. Got two so with a big swing and a miss. This will be strike number two. Had that connected, that could have easily gone over the fence. Moody gets set for the 2-2. That'll be hit and fouled away. Into the fans, <laughs> into, into the stands rather. Yeah, the fans over here had to duck out of the way of that one. But that'll be fouled off and we get set for the 2-2 once more. Moody wanting to come up with his third strikeout of the night up to this point. As he gets set for the wind up, sends it. This will be a fraction outside of the strike zone. We get set to go for the full count now. And this will be ball number four and a walk for the catcher, Bobby Gattuso. Adam Oxidine, the second baseman, restarting the batting order for Vanguard. Oxidine will have a runner on first. And no outs here at the top of the third. His current team still currently trails one to zero. Oxidine walked in the first inning, was able to get as far as third base and got left stranded. As he gets set for his first pitch. This will be hit a line drive just over the hands of the second baseman. This is gonna be a base hit, perhaps an extra. And he did not commit to the extra bases, but the runner on first, Bobby Gattuso, will advance over to third. This will be a base hit for the Vanguard Knights. And they've got runners on the corners now. Trevor Murray took a, a leaping catch attempt, and the ball scooted just over the fingertips of the glove. Able to come up with a good base hit for the Knights is Cody Antonucci, the shortstop number eight back on plate for the Knights. He had a ground out in the first inning. And in an attempt to pick off Oxidine on first is unsuccessful. Antonucci gets set now, runners on the corners, no outs here at the top of the third. Oxidine will leap back on to first safely. Moody on the mound now. Gets set, sends it. First pitch will be in the dirt. And Tanucci gets set for the 1-0. This one will slide just outside the strike zone. This will be called ball two. And Tanucci now gets set for the 2-0. An attempt to pick off Oxidine once more at first is unsuccessful. Moody trying to get into the veins of uh, the runner on first out there. This one will be hit a little bit of a worm burner just past second base. And the runner on third, Bobby Gattuso, will make it on home for the Knights. And they tie up the ball game. Oxide will advance out to second. And Cody Antonucci will pick up the second hit tonight for the Vanguard Knights. Making way now for left fielder, bigger part in center fielder, number 15, Brian Long. Long had a ground out in the first inning. The first pitch sent his way will be ball number one.
Long has a runner on first and second. And no outs at the top of the third. And the umpire calls this one just a little high, I suppose. That'll be ball number two. The Knights are able to tie up the ball game with Bobby Gattuso's run on home from third. So we're tied at one. And Long takes a big swing and a miss. This will be strike number one. But Oxidine and Antonucci on first and second, respectively. Come on, Bing. And the Knights right now have no outs here at the top of the third as they get set to go. Moody nearly caught Oxidine stealing. Kind of gave him a little bit of a uh, fake out pitch there almost, but didn't, didn't commit to the play. So Moody gets set and sends this one. This will be in the strike zone. That'll be strike number two, and we're at an even count here. Ty Moody, number 10 on the mound, gets set. Looks like everyone thought that uh, the pitch hit the batter, but the umpire is calling ball. He'll discuss with the other uh, other referees and see what's going on. So it looks like they said that Brian Long took a swing at that last pitch, and that was strike number three, so that'll be out number one for the Wildcats as Long makes his way back to the dugout. So Carson Lindsay, the designated hitter number 20, comes back onto the plate for Vanguard. Had a grind out in the first. He's got a runner on first and second, and now one away here at the top of the third. First pitch is... A little outside. Lindsay gets set for the 1 0 pitch. That'll stay in the strike zone. It'll be strike number one. Lindsay gets set for the 1 1. And time is called. <laughs> Lindsay got a piece of that one. Well, Carson, you got this, Carson. Gets fouled away behind him into the fence right here in front of me. So Carson Lindsay now gets set for the one, two. Looking to send some of these runners advanced, hopefully on home. But this is going to be strike number three, so it will not be the case. And Ty Moody picks up his fourth strikeout of the night. Making way now for Jake Tompkins, the pitcher, number five. Let's go five. Help yourself out right here. Come on, Jake. Tompkins walked in the second inning. He's able to make it as far as second. As he walks into the same situation, but a wild pitch will send the runners advanced. Hey, five, got a good situation. Let's go. So instead of first and second, now Tompkins has runners on second and third. And he gets set now for the 1-0 pitch.
Moody with the wind up and sends it. This will be high and outside. Ball number two. Third pitch will be another high one. This will be ball number three, and the pitcher is ahead of the count 3-0 and oh right now. Again, has a runner on second and third with two away here at the top of the third. And they're going to call this one high, and this will be ball four, and Jake Tompkins will take his second walk of the night. Making way for the first baseman, number 16, Michael Long. Long had a ground out in the second inning. As he now walks into a bases loaded situation with two away at the top of the third. First pitch will be right down the middle. Strike number one. Long has Oxidine on third. Antonucci on second and Tompkins on first. Second pitch will be low and in the dirt. I'm sorry. Game's currently tied right now, one apiece off of two hits. Vanguard right now has the one error of the night. As long will take a swing and a miss, this will be strike number two. And batter calls time. Step out, take a breather real quick. First baseman steps back in, and we're ready to go for the one-two pitch. As Moody with the windup and a swing and a miss. We'll send the Wildcats back to the dugout with some relief, as this will be strike number three and out number three for the Vanguard Knights. Well, they're able to even the score a little bit off of that one run. So we're tied now, one apiece going into the bottom of the third. But that means, folks, it is now time for the third fun fact of this Fun Fact Friday. Now, did you know that the first nationally broadcasted spring training game was on March 5, 1988? It was broadcasted on NBC when the Dodgers took on the Yankees down south in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. A little bit of a fun fact there for you. Now we're all tied up going into the bottom of the third. We'll take a quick break, folks, and we'll be right back here for Wayne Yancey Field. I'm Bridger Webb. You're watching Webb Sports Broadcasting. Welcome back to Wayne Yancey Field, folks. You're getting ready to go as Bradley White the second. Had to duck away from this first pitch. That'll be a quick ball number one. White came up with a double in the first inning, and he was able to produce the Wildcats only one right now as he just took strike number one. And a big swing and a miss will be strike number two for the shortstop. White gets set for the 1-2, leading off the bottom of the third. And he'll hit this one. It'll just scoot outside the third base line. This will be called foul. As he gets set for the 1-2 once more. Jake Tompkins still on the mound for the Vanguard Knights. As he sends this one. And it'll be a little outside. This is going to be ball number two. And an even count, and this is going to be hit over to the third baseman. Loses a little bit of a grip on it. Throws it over to the first baseman. Yes. And this will be in time. Third baseman lost his grip on it. Was able to pick it back up and launch it over to the first baseman in time as they come up with a great defensive play. This will send Bradley White back to the dugout from the first out. Making way now for Aaron Steleganis, the third baseman. Had a single in the first inning, come up with a stolen base as he hits this one out to the shortstop. And an easy pitch and catch over to the first baseman. This will be a quick out number two 
for the Wildcats. Tyler Thomas, the catcher number 11, coming back onto the plate. He walked in the first inning. So he has bases empty right now and two away at the bottom of the third. And the first pitch sent his way will be a little bit low. Ball one. Second pitch will get hit out to the second baseman. Second baseman loses his grip on it, and this will be a base on error. Mason Laredo will be pinch running for Tyler Thomas. It is Tyler Rogers, the first baseman number eight on plate now. Has a runner on first and two away here at the bottom of the third. He hits this one out. It'll be a low dropper into right field. And Laredo will take third from first. A quick and easy base hit. Trevor Murray now the second baseman coming on plate now. He's got a runner on the corners and two away at the bottom of the third. Strike number one. Jake Tompkins able to keep it in the strike zone. Slid just a little to the out. However, that second pitch will be a little too inside. That'll be called ball one. Murray able to hit this one out into right field, and the right fielder is there to make the easy play, and this will be out number three, and this will retire the side. Well, the Knights able to come up with some quick work of the Wildcats in this third inning. As we get set to go to change innings for the top of the fourth, Knights will lead off with the left fielder, Eddie Marquez, Braden Ballard, and the catcher, Bobby Gattuso. Take a quick break, folks. We'll be right back. You're watching Web Sports Broadcasting. Welcome back to Wayne Nancy Field, folks. You're getting ready to go to lead off the top of the fourth inning. Left fielder, Eddie Marquez, on plate now for the Vanguard Knights. First pitch will be strike number one. Marquez had a strikeout in the second inning, hoping to change his ways from that second inning. And a swing and a miss. Well, the player said he got a, just a little bit of it, but that'll still be called strike number two. He's able to check his swing in time. This will be called ball number one now. Ty Moody looking to come up with his sixth strikeout of the game up to this point. As Marquez calls time, steps out of the box for a moment. Wildcats wanting to get back into the postseason. We are rounding up towards the end of the season. Their last appearance was in 2018. The school is still looking for their first state title as this gets fouled away. Wildcats overall in tournament appearances, they are 20 and 25, and they are 0 for 4 in finals appearances. It's Ty Moody with the windup and sends it. This will be a swing and a miss, and this will, in fact, be strikeout number six for Ty Moody. It'll be out number one, making way for the right fielder once more, Braden Ballard. Ballard also struck out in the second. Oh, 
as he gets set confidently in the batter's box as Ty Moody sends it. Able to check his swing, and this will be called ball one. And the Knights are also looking to get back into the postseason. Their last appearance was in 2017. Their overall 4-11 and 11 in tournament appearances, and they have no finals appearances. As Ballard gets set for the 1-1. There's a good hit and chop down the third baseline. He touched it. And the third baseman was looking to make a play on it, but the umpire called it ball, or foul, excuse me. So we will get set for the one, two. Ty Moody with the wind up and sends it. This is gonna be a swing and a miss. And this will be strikeout number seven for Ty Moody. Making way now back onto the plate, the catcher number nine, Bobby Gattuso. Gattuso walked in the third inning, was able to come up with the tying run for the Knights. First pitch will be strike one. Come on, Bob. This will get hit out, and it'll creep just outside of the first baseline. This will be foul, strike number two. Gattuso gets set for the 0-2 now as Moody looks to come up with his eighth strikeout. As he sends it, and this will be strike number three and strikeout number eight for Ty Moody. He is on fire so far. Well, that will retire the side. We get set for the bottom of the fourth inning. Wildcats able to come up. Well, I say Wildcats. Ty Moody able to come up with quick work as we get set to go. We're still tied 1-1. Wildcats one run off of three hits. The Vanguard Knights one run off of two hits with two errors. And, folks, it is now time for your fourth fun fact of this Fun Fact Friday. Now, did you know? Nolan Ryan was the first player to make $1 million in a season. That was back in 1979. Nolan Ryan, Nolan Ryan, first player to make $1 million in a season in 1979. It's funny to think a million dollars now seemed like a big deal in 1979. If only they knew what the players would be making now. We got a few more fun facts for you later tonight. We get set to go to lead off the fourth inning. Harrison Pesola, Ty Moody, and Connor DeGeorge will lead off the inning for the Wildcats. I want to thank you again for tuning in tonight on Web Sports Broadcasting. I'm Bridger Webb coming to you live from Wayne Yancey Field here at Forest High School in Ocala, Florida. Do you like what you're watching? Do you like what you're hearing so far? Would you like this done for your school? Well, you can email us at websportsbroadcasting at yahoo.com. For any booking inquiries, again, that's Webb's Sports Broadcasting at Yahoo.com for any booking inquiries. You can also DM us on Twitter for any booking inquiries as well, at Webb's Play by Play on Twitter. Again, that's at Webb's, W-E-B-B-S, Play by Play on Twitter. So we get ready to go for the bottom of the fourth. Harrison Pasola coming on plate for the Wildcats. And a pop fly in the first inning. First pitch sent his way will be ball number one. The center center fielder will take strike number one. Has an average of 318 coming into tonight's game. Two RBIs. Third pitch sent his way will be ball number two. And a big swing and a miss will be strike number two. We're back in an even count. Wildcats wanting to break the tie here as he smacks this one over to the third baseline. The third baseman loses grip, picks it back up, and this will again be in time as the third to first connection for the Vanguard Knights comes up again. 
It's the third baseman out there. Trace all day. Nearly lost it, was able to pick it up in time and send it on over to the first baseman. So this will be out number one. And Ty Moody, the designated hitter and pitcher tonight, coming back onto the plate as he smacks this one over into the left field. But this will be in foul territory. Foul ball. Strike number one. Second pitch, high inside. Moody had to duck his chin away from that one. So we get set to go for the 1-1 now. Solo with the bases empty, sends this one just past the shortstop. This will be a base hit. Single. Urgency. A little bit of lack of urgency, according to the fans behind me. But Ty Moody able to come up with a base hit single. Pinch running right now will be number 15, Brock White. So Brock White will be on first base for Ty Moody. Making way now for Connor DeGeorge, the left fielder. Has a runner on first, one away here at the bottom of the fourth. And we're still tied one apiece. As the first pitch sent to George's way will be ball one. The George had a single in the second inning but was caught stealing. As the attempt to pick off White over on first is no good. George gets set for the 1-0. This will be fouled away behind the Wildcat dugout. Nearly hits the barbecue food truck out here. That would have been a tragedy. So to George now gets set for the 1-1. Again, runner on first, one away. He'll hit a worm burner over to second. This will be... Well, it looks like the runner on second will be out, but it looks like... The George will be safe at first. Ryan Curtis, the right fielder, coming on plate once more. And a pop fly to the catcher in the second inning. First pitch will be strike one. He's got Connor to George on first. Two away at the bottom of the fourth. We're tied one apiece. As Brock White was not able to make it over to second after the Georgia's hit. Third pitch sent. Beg your pardon. Second pitch sent Curtis's way will be ball number one. Ball number two for the right fielder. Curtis gets set now for the 2-1, has the George on first. He's taking a few steps out, looking to lead off. But the George able to make his way back over to first after the pickoff attempt. Curtis will take a swing and a miss. This will be strike number two. Two to the count is Ryan Curtis. Looking to not strike out as this will send the Wildcats back to the dugout. They'll hit and foul this one away. Nearly hits my car, but we're all good to go over here. We'll get a piece of this one. It'll send into the fence here in front of me. Be another foul ball. Count is will remain at 2 2. We get set to go now for the 2 2. Runner stealing over to second. This is going to be what a fantastic catch by the shortstop. Cody Antonucci with the leaping catch. And this will put the side away. 
Cody Antonucci, what a great catch that was to put away the side here. So Vanguard able to make relatively quick work of the Wildcats as they put them away pretty easily, and we get set to go for the top of the fifth. Leading off for the Knights will be restarting the batting order. Adam Oxidine, Cody Antonucci, and Brian Long. I want to thank you again for tuning in to Web Sports Broadcasting. Now the next game for the Vanguard Knights will be at Lakanto High School. This coming Tuesday, April 20th at 6.30. Meanwhile, the Forest High School Wildcats next game will be here at home versus Lincoln tomorrow at 12 o'clock noon. And that game will be a part of the five home game stretch to end the Wildcats season. But we'll take a quick break, folks, and we'll be right back here for the top of the fifth inning. We're tied one apiece. You're watching Web Sports Broadcasting. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Wayne Yancey Field, folks. Getting ready to go to lead off the top of the fifth inning. This is number two, the second baseman, Adam Oxidine. His first pitch will be strike number one. As Ty Moody still on the mound for the Wildcats as he sends this one. And Oxidine will get a good piece of this one out to left center. Yes. And this is going to drop just in front of the fence. And this is going to be extra bases for the second baseman. And Oxidine will pick up a double here to lead off the fifth inning. Big game feel here tonight at Wayne Yancey Field as these two crosstown rivals clash once again here this season. As far as fans in attendance, we have a split house here tonight. Obviously, we have our fair share of Wildcat fans here. The Vanguard Knights have really shown up as well. As Cody Antonucci, the shortstop, gets set for his third at-bat of the night. Had a ground out in the first, and he singled in the third. He's got a runner on second and no outs here to lead off the fifth inning. So he'll bunt this one, and he'll scoot just outside the third baseline. Antonucci gets set now for the 0-1. Moody on plate now. He gets set. Decides not to take it. He's keeping an eye on Oxidine there behind him at second. Antonucci gets set once more. For the 0-1, he'll get bunted and they'll decide to take the play over to third, but the throw is not in time as Moody was just a fraction too late and this will be a base hit off of the bunt for Cody Antonucci. So Brian Long, the center fielder, now has his third, or this will be his third appearance here at the plate. He has runners on the corners and no outs here at the top of the fifth. As he takes a swing at this one, it'll take a bounce. And the attempt at the double play will be no good, but the runner on third, Adam Oxidine, will bring it on home for the Knights. And they take the lead. They're up 2-1 to one right now over the Wildcats. Antonucci was not able to make it to, to second base, but Brian Long will get the base single. He'll pick up the RBI for that one. Carson Lindsay, the designated hitter number 20, on the plate now for the Knights. Ty Moody attempt to... Oh, Wildcats nearly picked up the trick play on that one. Ty Moody faked the throw back to the pitcher and nearly caught the runner on first. Cody and or, uh, Brian Long, excuse me, nearly caught him with the trickery. But we get set to go here. Carson Lindsay back on plate. Come on, Carson. First pitch will be strike number one. Oh! 
Lindsay gets set, and that, the trickery over at first base, uh, looked a little close, but the umpire called him safe at first. Pickoff attempt will be no good once more. Tyler Rogers making a leaping attempt to get the runner on first off, out. It'll be no good as Ty Moody gets set to go and sends it to Lindsay, and Lindsay will foul this one away. Just over the Knights' dugout. Baseball ready, Carson. Come on, Carson. Come on, Carson. So this will be foul and strike number two. We get set now for the 0-2. But he gets set with the wind up and sends it. This one is a smidge high, a smidge outside. This will be ball one. As he gets a break on that one, as he gets set now for the one two. Moody on the mound, sends this one. And it'll be a little inside, nearly clips Lindsay on the way in. But the designated hitter is ever to, able to duck this one. He'll pick up ball number two. We get set for the 2-2 two -two now. Come on, Carson. An attempt to pick off Brian Long at first is once again unsuccessful. Game of cat and mouse between Ty Moody and Brian Long. It's Carson Lindsay. Gets set once more for the 2-2. Moody on the mound with the wind up and sends it. This will be just a hair inside. We're at a full count now. Three balls, two strikes. One away, runner on first here at the top of the fifth. Bangar Knights lead 2-1 over the Forest Wildcats. As Moody sends it, this will be hit and fouled away. We get set for the full count once more. Not able to pick off Ryan Long over at first. They're going to call this one in the strike zone, and this will be strike number three. This will be strikeout number nine for Ty Moody tonight. Now, Brian Long was able to advance from first over to second, so Jake Tompkins, the pitcher, now at bat for the Knights for the third time tonight. First pitch will be a ball. So Tompkins right now has a runner on second, two away at the top of the fifth. His team leads two to one right now. So Moody gets set and sends it. This will be get just a piece of it that will foul out behind him into the fence. Tompkins gets ready for the one one. This will sink into the strike zone. This will be a strike number two. As Ty Moody wants to pick up his 10th strikeout of the game. I think that'll mean free pizza or something for the rest of us here. As Moody gets set, this is going to be hit and chopped away right over to Tyler Rogers, and this is going to be out number three, and this will retire the side. The Wildcats had a little bit of an annoying defensive stand there with the Knights. Adam Oxidine able to hit the double and come up with the other base run for the Knights. So they currently lead 2-1 to one right now. But we'll get set to go for the bottom of the fifth. 
And as the teams warm up and get ready, I'm here to give you your fifth fun fact of this Fun Fact Friday. Now, did you know Richard Nixon was the first U.S. president to witness a triple play on July 15th, 1969. The Detroit Tigers pulled it off against the Washington Senators. Fun fact. I got at least two more here for you tonight as we get ready to go for the bottom of the fifth. And the Wildcats will restart their batting order. So Bradley White, Aaron Steliganis, and Tyler Thomas will lead off the fifth inning. And we'll be right back here, folks. You're watching Web Sports Broadcasting. Welcome back to Wayne Yancey Field, folks. We're getting ready to go to lead off the bottom of the fifth. Bradley White, the second, the shortstop for the Wildcats, back on plate. This is his third at-bat of the night. Had a double in the first and a ground out in the third. Looking to change the game here a little bit in the fifth inning for himself. He gets set for the 1-1 now. White coming into tonight's game with an average of 269. 10 RBIs, three doubles, make that four doubles after uh, his one earlier tonight. So he gets set for the one two pitch. This one will be a little bit inside and low. He, Bradley White gets set for the 2-2. Two -two. He'll hit this one out easily to the third baseman. And a nice, simple, whoa, see, I spoke too soon. Not a nice and simple pitch and catch. That throw from the third baseman was a little high, and Bradley White was able to scoot in for a base hit single. Aaron Stelaganis, the third baseman for the Wildcats, coming back on for his third at-bat of the game. He's got a runner on first right now. And no outs at the bottom of the fifth. Now White on first, able to steal the base over to second. Stelaganis gets set to go for the 1-0. He hits this one out, just left of the shortstop. Bradley White on second, rounds third, makes his way home, and he brings it on home for the tying run. Aaron Stelaganis comes up with a base hit single RBI. And we have ourselves a ball game, folks. Bradley White makes his way on home. And we're tied 2-2. As Tyler Thomas, number 11, the catcher, coming back on to the plate here for the Wildcats now. Now, I misspoke a little bit earlier. White was able to get the base on error. But nevertheless, he stole the base over to second, was able to round on home from Aaron Seleganis' base hit single. As again, Tyler Thomas, the catcher, now on plate. Thomas is one for one. He walked in the first inning, had a single in the third. He was able to make it as far as third. As right now, he's got a runner on first. Took a big swing and a miss. And the catcher was uh, attempting to pick off Stella Gaines on first. Thomas pops this one over to the second baseman. And the second baseman's there to make the easy play. So this will be out number one for the Wildcats as Tyler Rogers, the first baseman, comes back. This will be his third at bat. He's one for two tonight, had a single in the third. 
as he's got, again, a runner on first and now one away here at the bottom of the fifth. Now Rodgers was able to get the smallest piece of this one, and they're going to call this a foul ball. Rogers back in the box, umpire back behind the plate. We're ready to go once more. And the wild pitch, Stella Gaines was able to capitalize. He gets his footing and takes his way, and he's going to try over for third, and he's going to be able to make it. Wow. An attempt to pick off. The first baseman not able to get his hand on it, and Aaron Stella Gaines picks up two bases on the mistake. Uh, Stella Gaines now on third. 90 feet away from taking the lead here away from the Vanguard Knights as Tyler Rogers gets set now for the 0-1 as he hits this one out to right field and this is going to be fouled away. Tyler Rogers gets set once more for the 0-2. Runner on third and one away at the bottom of the fifth. He'll hit this one out right to the third baseman. And this will throw over to the first baseman. It'll be an easy out from Tyler Rogers. Stelaganis was thinking about taking on home, but he decided against it. Probably the smarter decision. Trevor Murray now the second baseman. Coming back on plate for the Wildcats now. Rogers is 0 for 1. He walked in the first. So he has a runner on third and two away now here at the bottom of the fifth. First pitch his way is low in the dirt. Jake Tompkins gets set for the Knights, sends this one. This will be outside, ball two. <laughs> Trevor Murray picks up ball number three, and he's ahead of the count now, 3-0. Wildcat dugout looking to get into the head of Jake Tompkins. And the fourth pitch will be right down the middle, strike number one. Murray's looking for the perfect pitch sent his way to send Stella Gaines home, and this one certainly won't be it as he takes a big swing and a miss. And he's giving himself now a full count here. He's got a runner 90 feet away looking to take the lead run. Fans are getting a little loud here at Wayne Yancey Field as this gets tipped away. Over the fence and back behind us. Count remains 3-2. Murray hits this one out to right field. And the right fielder is there to make the play. And this will keep the Wildcats at bay. Stelaganis was able to come up with a great effort for the Wildcats. He was just a mere 90 feet away, but not able to bring it on home as Trevor Murray smacks this one out into the right fielder's hands. Braden Ballard out there to make the play for the Knights, but we get set to go for the top of the sixth inning. We're tied two apiece. Wildcats have two runs off of five hits, no errors. Meanwhile, the Vanguard Knights have two runs off of three hits and three errors so far tonight. We get set to go for the top of the sixth. We'll have our what is it, fifth inning stretch as we get ready for some more exciting high school baseball action. 
Ty Moody still on the plate for the Wildcats. And leading off for the Knights will be Michael Long, Eddie Marquez, and Braden Ballard. We'll be right back, folks. You're watching Web Sports Broadcasting. Welcome back to Wayne Nancy Field, folks. We get ready to lead off the top of the six. This is the first baseman, Michael Long, for the Vanguard Knights. His first pitch will be ball one. Long is 0 for 2 right now. Had a ground out in the second. He struck out in the third as he gets a piece of this one and sends it into the fence behind him. Long gets set for the 1-1. One 1-1 -one. One -one will be a smidge outside. Ball number 2. Ty Moody, number 10, still doing the pitching duties for the Wildcats tonight. As Long gets a piece of this one, it'll send it over the fence behind him now. We're back at an even count here at two. First baseman leading off the inning for the Knights. And a swing and a miss is strike number three. And this is strikeout number 10 for number 10, Ty Moody. Pitching a fire game tonight as Eddie Marquez, the left fielder, coming onto the plate now for the Knights. First pitch sent Marquez's way will be strike number one. Eddie Marquez, the left fielder, has two strikeouts up to this point. Looking to change his luck here at the top of the sixth as he takes a big swing and a miss, strike number two. Moody gets set to go. And Marquez will call time. He'll step out of the box real fast. Marquez has empty bases and one away at the top of the six to lead off. And we're tied once again here at two. And that third pitch will be just a hair outside. And they're going to call this one strike number three, the third strikeout for Eddie Marquez. This will be strikeout number 11 for Ty Moody. How about that? The right fielder number 11, Braden Ballard, coming onto the plate now for the Knights. He too has two strikeouts up to this point. Ty Moody looking to come up with strikeout number 12. First pitch uh, was sent his way, and he got a piece of it. They'll call it a foul ball. Strike number one, and the second one will be another big swing and a miss. Strike two, and Ty Moody has an opportunity to pick up his 12th strikeout tonight, and this will also be Ballard's third strikeout, but this will not be the case as he hits this one out to the shortstop, and it is in time from shortstop to first baseman. Great connection from White to Rogers, and the side is retired. Wildcats make quick work of the Knights in the sixth inning as we get ready to go for the bottom of the sixth. We're still tied here at two. And we are already here for the sixth fun fact of the night. Now, folks, did you know, in 1902, the Chicago baseball team did not have a name after abandoning tries with the names of the Colts and the Orphans. Now one day a sports writer named the team the Cubs simply because it was short enough to fit on a newspaper headline and clearly the name stuck. So that's how the Chicago Cubs got their name. Now I've got one more fun fact for you at the middle of the seventh. But in the meantime, we'll take a short break and we'll be right back here as Harrison Pesola, Ty Moody, and Connor DeGeorge will lead off the bottom of the six for the Wildcats. Thank you for watching, folks. You're watching Web Sports Broadcasting here on YouTube. We'll be right back. 
And we're back live here at Wayne Yancey Field as Harrison Pesola, the center fielder for the Wildcats, gets set as his first pitch will send it a high one out to left field. And the left fielder is there to make the play. And this will be a, a quick out here for Harrison Pesola. He is now 0 for 3 tonight. As Ty Moody, the pitcher and designated hitter tonight, comes back on for the Wildcats. Moody is one for two so far, and a single in the fourth inning. As his first pitch is a hitter inside. He gets set now for the 1-0. Base is empty, one away at the bottom of the sixth. He gets set now for the 0-2 after the second ball. That third pitch, though, will stay inside the strike zone. This will be strike number one here for Ty Moody. Moody hits this one out to left field, way left field. And the left fielder is out there to make another play for the Knights. That's Eddie Marquez out there. Marquez not able to come up with too much here batting-wise, but is able to come up with two great catches in a row for the Knights. As he sends Ty Moody back to the dugout, and Connor DeGeorge, the left fielder for the Wildcats, coming back onto the plate. DeGeorge is two for two tonight, two singles. So he will take strike number one. George doesn't take a swing at this one, but it's right down the middle. This will be strike two. And George here in a sticky situation as he gets a piece of this one and sends it behind the fence here. So the count will remain 0-2. George is able to hit this one. Out into the pitcher, and this is going to be a line drive to the pitcher, and this will be out number three. Tompkins able to come up with a great play there for the Knights as he sends the side away relatively easily. These two teams are having a great back and forth here. Now, of course, we still have an inning to go, but... The way that these two teams are playing right now, it very well could be another extra inning situation here. That's how their last matchup went played out. They went into uh, eight innings. And again, the, uh, the Vanguard Knights were able to edge out the Forest High School Wildcats two to one in that matchup from earlier this season. Wildcats looking to change the tides here as we get set to go for the top of the seventh. But we want to thank you guys again for tuning in tonight on Web Sports Broadcasting. I am Bridger Webb coming to you live from Wayne Yancey Field here at Forest High School in Ocala, Florida. Do you like what you're hearing? Do you like what you're watching so far? Well, folks, you can take this for your very own school. You can email us for booking inquiries at websportsbroadcasting at yahoo.com. That's webs, W-E-B-B-S, sportsbroadcasting at yahoo.com. You can also DM us on Twitter, and you can follow us on Twitter as well, at Webb's Play by Play. Once again, that's on Twitter, at Webb's, W-E-B-B-S, Play by Play on Twitter, and you can DM us there for business inquiries as well. Now again, the next game for the Forest High School Wildcats will be versus Lincoln High School tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow high noon, rather, here. It'll be a part of the five-game home game stretch to end the season for the Wildcats. As we get ready to go to lead off the top of the seventh inning, this is the catcher number nine, Bobby Gattuso. First pitch will be ball number one. Gattuso takes time, steps out of the box. Stretches out a little bit, and he steps back in, and we're ready to go once more. This will be called in the strike zone. Tiger Woods. 
Got two so good set for the 1-1. This will be strike number two. Ty Moody looking to come up with his 12th strikeout. Could take it right here. And he will. This will be strike number three and strikeout number 12 for Ty Moody. Moody's been in all game for the Wildcats, obviously able to come up with 12 strikeouts as he now faces Adam Oxidine once more. Oxidine's been a little bit of a thorn in the Wildcats' side tonight. The second baseman, number two, walked in the first, had a single in the third, and had a double in the fifth. He was able to come up with one of the two runs here for the Knights. As he takes his second strike, he now faces an 0-2. And, and Ty Moody on his way for his 13th strikeout. But it won't be on this pitch. This will be a little bit inside. Ball one. Moody gets set. Sends it. And a big swing and a miss is strikeout 13 for Ty Moody. Oxidine took a sw big swing and a miss. Making way now for Cody Antonucci, the shortstop. Antonucci able to come up with two base hits tonight. Two for three so far up to this point. His first pitch will be a little inside, ball one. Big swing will be strike one. Now if the Wildcats can put Antonucci away right now, all they'd have to do is get just one base run, and they will win this game as Antonucci fouls this one down the third baseline. Shortstop Antonucci gets set for the one, two. Base is empty and two away here at the top of the seventh. We're tied two apiece as Ty Moody, the lights out pitcher tonight, will take strike out number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 strikeouts for Ty Moody tonight as he retires the side on three strikeouts and we get set to go for the bottom of the seventh inning. Wildcats in a position to take this one home. But as they get set for that, we will give you your final fun fact for this Fun Fact Friday. Now, did you know the first MLB regular season game played before April 1st was March 31st, 1996. Pretty fitting considering the MLB season just got started not too long ago on April 1st. But yeah, the first season game, the first game played before April 1st was March 31st, 96. Well, those are your seven fun facts for tonight. Every broadcast on a Friday here we will give you some fun facts in the middle of each inning. But we get ready to go to lead off the bottom of the seventh. We'll have Ryan Curtis, Bradley White the second, and Aaron Stelaganis to lead off the bottom of the seventh. And the Wildcats are going to be itching to pick up a run here to walk off the game and take it away here from the Vanguard Knights as we're tied to a piece coming into the bottom of the seventh. We're in no changes as far as the scoreboard's concerned. Wildcats still have two runs off of five hits. And they have no errors. Meanwhile, the Vanguard Knights have two runs off of three hits with three errors tonight. As Ryan Curtis, number 12, the right fielder, officially now gets set to make his way onto the plate for the Wildcats. Curtis with an average of 125 coming into tonight's game. No RBIs, no doubles, no triples, no home runs. 
as the first pitch his way will be ball one. Second pitch will be low, almost in the dirt, ball two. So he gets set to go. This one will stay inside the strike zone though. That'll be called strike one. Jake Tompkins still on the mound as this one will get fouled away behind us. Curtis gets set for the 2-2 now. Wind up and sends it. This is going to be strike three and a big strikeout here for Ryan Curtis, making way for Bradley White the second. White is two for three so far. He's actually scored the only two runs tonight for the Wildcats. Had a double in the first and a single in the fifth as he takes strike number one. And a big swing and a miss will be just off the mark here, and this is strike number two. These Wildcat players are swinging for the fences to put this one away, as this will be fouled, kind of sent behind us into the fence on an awkward contact. White with an average of 269 coming into tonight's game. 10 RBIs and four doubles as he picked up one earlier tonight as we get set to go for the 1-2. Check to swing just in time. This will be ball two. He'll hit this one, it'll be popped out. Looks like the second baseman's out there looking to make a play. Make that the right fielder. And the right fielder is out there to make a play and this will be out number two for the Wildcats. And Aaron Stella Gaines will come back onto the plate for the Wildcats. Two for three tonight. He had two singles and a ground out tonight. First pitch his way will be ball one. Umpire will call the second pitch strike one. We're at a 1-1 count. Base is empty two away here at the bottom of the seventh. Seleganis looking for the big hit. Not able to get it on that one. A swing and a miss will be strike number two. And Steleganis is now behind one, two. And he's able to just get a little piece of this one over to the third baseman. And he'll be have this one in time. And he'll be safe as the throw from third over to first was just a little too slow. And this will be Steleganis' third base hit tonight. So Steleganis keeps hopes alive as Tyler Thomas comes back onto the plate for the Wildcats. Thomas walked in the first, had a single in the third, and he popped out in the fifth. As right now he has Stella Gaines on first base. And two away here at the bottom of the seventh. Umpire's talking real quick. We'll let them discuss and we'll be right back. Tyler Thomas again gets set. This is the catcher number 11. This one will be low and way outside. Ball one. Stella Gaines attempting to steal second. And he's got it in time. Stolen base from first to second. And Aaron Stella Gaines is in scoring position now as we get set to go for the 2-0 pitch now. Third pitch sent his way will be strike number one. So 
So Tyler Thomas has the 2-1 now. Runner on second, two away at the bottom of the seventh. We're tied 2-2. Low pitch will be a ball three. Thomas gets set for the 3-1 pitch. In an attempt to pick off Stella Gaines at second is unsuccessful. Now the 3-1 will be a ball four, and this will be a walk for Tyler Thomas. <laughs> Tyler Rogers coming back onto the plate now for the Wildcats. Initially playing Walk by Pantera, quickly changed to the hit song Dance Monkey. But Rogers gets set to go. He's got a runner on first and second, two away here at the bottom of the seventh. Rogers has a runner in scoring position in the form of Aaron Steleganis out there at second. And he'll get just a, a piece of this one. This will be tipped and fouled away. Rogers, the first baseman, gets set. Is this is number two, Adam Oxidine, pitching for the Knights right now. Oxidine gets set and sends this one over to Rogers, and Rogers will hit this one over to left side. And this is hit and caught out in left field. And this game is going to require some extra innings, folks. Well, seven couldn't cover it. Seven couldn't cover it last game either between these two teams. We're going into the top of the eighth inning. We're still tied at two, folks. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back, folks. You're watching Web Sports Broadcasting. Welcome back to Wayne Yancey Field. Folks are getting ready to go for the top of the eighth inning. This is Brian Long at the plate now for the Knights. First pitch will be a little high. This will be ball one. Ty Mooney has officially retired the pitching duties tonight for the Wildcats. This is number one, Brady Vowinkle on the plate now. Big swing and a miss will actually clip the finger of the umpire. That couldn't have felt great. I think what had happened was I, he tipped the ball away and that ball went right into the knuckle of the umpire. So we'll uh, we'll take a just a quick break here while the umpire gets his finger patched up, and we'll be right back, folks. You're watching Web Sports Broadcasting. We're back here at Wayne Yancey Field. The umpire is patched up, and we're ready to go. Now again, this is Brian Long, the center fielder. We get ready for the one-one pitch. Is Brady Vowinkle on mound now? Vowinkle with the wind up and sends it. And this will be into the dirt, ball two. Vowinkle <laughs> sends it. This will be called strike number two. And Long now faces a 2-2 two -two count. Vowinkle sends it. A swing and a miss will be strike number three and strikeout number one for Brady Vowinkle. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Come on, Carson. Confidence, bud. Confidence. 
Carson Lindsay, the designated hitter, coming back into the plate now for the Knights. Lindsay had a ground out in two strikeouts tonight. So he has bases empty, one away at the top of the eighth inning. First pitch will be a little outside. This will be ball one. Lindsay gets set to go. Bo Winkle on the mound to wind up, sends it. This will be strike one. Winkle's third pitch will be low and outside, ball two. Carson Lindsay gets set, takes a hit out to the shortstop, and this is just over the fingertips of Bradley White, the second. And this will be a base hit single as Carson Lindsay does not decide to try for extra bases. This will be a base hit. Base hit for the Knights, and this will make way now for number five, the pitcher, Jake Tompkins. Carson Lindsay will pick up the fourth base hit tonight for the Knights. As Tompkins, the pitcher, comes back onto the plate. He had two walks tonight and a grounder. So he has a runner on first and one away at the top of the eighth. As Vo Winkle sends it his way. And this will be called ball one. But Winkles gets set for the 1-0. This will stay in the strike zone. Evens up the count here at one. Come on, Jake. This gets hit out to the right field. And the right fielder is there to make the play for the Wildcats. But the pinch runner for the Knights is able to make his way back in time. Now Jake Tompkins will be out number two, making way now for Michael Long, the first baseman number 16. Long had a ground out and two strikeouts tonight as he's got a runner on first and two away at the top of this extra inning. Bo Winkle's first pitch to Long will be a little low and outside. Long gets set, and this will be called ball number two. Long gets set for the 2-0. And the stolen base attempt is successful as the runner on first makes his way over to second. And Michael Long is way ahead of the count now with a 3-0 count. So right now he's got a runner on second. Bo Winkle gets set, sends this, and this will be ball number four, and Michael Long will take a walk over to first. Not something that the Wildcats were needing right now as Eddie Marquez, the left fielder, comes back onto the base. 
I beg your pardon. This is not Eddie Marquez. This is number 18, Kylan Carter. Wildcats having a bit of a powwow there on the pitcher's mound. And Colin McLaughlin is the pinch runner out on second base now for the Knights. Wildcats break the huddle. Everyone goes back to their respective positions. We get ready to go here. As again, this is Kylan Carter. This is Carter's first at bat of the game tonight, pinch hitting. He has a runner on first and second with two away here at the top of the eighth inning. Bo Winkle on the mound. Gets set, wind up, sends it. And this will be ball one. A big swing and a miss from Carter will be strike number one. Not able to check a swing in time on that one. That'll be strike number two. Right now he's behind one, two. Runner on first and second and two away at the top of the eighth inning. We're tied here at two in extra innings for this high school baseball matchup. As Bernie Vo Winkle gets set. And the wild pitch will advance the runners. Colin McLaughlin on third now, and Michael Long over at second right now is Kylan Carter. Still has a, well, he has a 2-2 now. As he'll take time and step out of the batter's box real fast. Bowinkle's pitch sent his way is going to be a little outside. This will be ball three, and we're at a full count here. As Carter gets set for the full count. Bowinkle gets set. Wind up and sends it. And this will be called strike number three and strikeout number two for Brady Vowinkle. This will retire the side, and the Wildcats nearly escape the close call as we go into the bottom of the eighth inning. We will get set to lead off with Trevor Murray, Harrison Pasola, and Ty Moody. We're still tied at two here, folks. We want to thank you again for tuning in for Web Sports Broadcasting. I'm Bridger Webb coming to you live here at Wayne Yancey Field at Forest High School. We're in extra innings right now. As the Forest High School Wildcats taking on their crosstown rivals in the Vanguard Knights. Couldn't have asked for a better night. Couldn't have asked for a better game here tonight. As these two rivals facing off once again for the second time this season. And again, the, uh, the animosity between these two teams is that of the Green Bay Packers and Chicago Bears. Think of the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens. Think of the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox. This is what these two teams are to each other. Now, they have already exceeded their length from their first matchup. They, only, they ended the game in eight innings. Well... 
Looks like uh, the Wildcats have the opportunity to end this game in eight innings, I should say. As we get set to go here to lead off the bottom of the eighth, this is the second baseman, Trevor Murray. Murray coming into tonight's game with an average of 316, has a home run, one of four. Come on up, it's better in the pitch, you just called a strike. Trevor Murray also has 11 RBIs and five doubles as he hits this one on the wrong end of the third base line for him. This will be called foul ball. And he's at an even count now at one. That third pitch sent his way will be called strike number two. Murray gets set. This will be ball number two. Just put us out on that pitch, huh? That was a better pitch. You are too inconsistent. We get ready to go here. This is going to be fouled away back behind him. Murray gets set for the 2-2. Smacks this one down the third base line just on the other side. This will be foul ball. Trevor Murray makes his way back to home plate, and we're ready to go for the 2-2 pitch. This is the second baseman again, number seven, Trevor Murray. They don't get that call. We did. Consistent. Fans behind me protesting about the call as we now have a full count here. And this will be ball number four and a walk for Trevor Murray. Struck him out three times there. He'll make his way over to first base is Harrison Pasola, the center fielder. Number 24 comes back. It's over three so far tonight. Hopefully able to uh, change his luck here as right now he's got a runner on first and no outs at the bottom of the eighth. The Wildcats score. They put this game away. Pasola went to bunt, but decided against it. The umpire will call this one ball one. Well know now the attempt to pick off Murray at first unsuccessful. He'll bunt this one down the first base line. It'll be an easy tag out for Harrison Pasola. For Trevor Murray, able to advance from first over to second. This is number 10, Ty Moody, the designated hitter. This will be his third at bat, his fourth at bat tonight, I beg your pardon. So he has a runner on second and one away now at the bottom of the eighth. First pitch will be outside, ball one. Trevor Murray in scoring position for the Wildcats as Moody sends this one high into the stars. And this will be an easy catch as a pop-up for the first baseman. This will be out number two as Connor DeGeorge, the left fielder, comes back on. 
George able to come up with two singles. If he can hit a single just right, this might put this game away. But right now he's got a runner on second and two away at the bottom of the eighth. So he gets set for his first pitch. It'll get sent over to the first baseman. That's right. And this will put the side away. This is going to need more innings, folks. So the Knights able to make some relatively quick work of the Wildcats as we get set to go for the top of the ninth inning. We're still tied at two. And we'll be right back, folks. You're watching Web Sports Broadcasting. Welcome back to Wayne Yancey Field, folks. You're getting ready for the top of the ninth inning as this game is requiring a lot more than what the original seven-inning stretch here is for high school baseball. This is number 11, Braden Ballard, at the plate now for the Knights. First pitch is outside and in the dirt. This will be ball one as Brady Vowinkle still on the mound for the Wildcats tonight. This will be hit out into the shortstop as a line drive, and Bradley White the second is out there to come up with a great play for the Wildcats. This will be out number one. Making way now will be Bobby Gattuso. Gattuso walked in the third, was able to come up with one of the two runs for the Knights tonight. As Vowinkle gets set, and a big swing and a miss will be strike one. Come on, Bob. Gattuso takes strike number two. And he's suddenly behind the count 0-2 as he has bases empty and one away at the top of the ninth. Still tied 2-2. Two to two. This gets hit out into right field, and umpire out there on the first base calls it a foul ball. So Gattuso will make his way back to home plate, and we will retry this 0-2. Gattuso gets set for the 0-2. Winkles outside with the windup, takes it, and this is going to be ball number one. <laughs> Bowwinkle gets set for the one-two pitch, wind up and sends it, and Gattuso is going to hit this one out to right field, and the right fielder is there to make an easy play out of it. This will be out number two. Ryan Curtis out there to make the play for the Wildcats. As Adam Oxidine comes back onto the plate for Vanguard. He's got bases empty and two away at the top of the ninth as the Wildcats are shifting over to the left-hand side. We're expecting this ball to go over there, I suppose. Swing and a miss will be strike one for the second baseman. Oxidine will foul this one just over the fence here. Some Vanguard fans are able to protect the barbecue food truck back here. There's valuable goods back there. As Oxidine gets set for the 0-2 now, Vowinkle with the wind up and sends it. And they're gonna call this one just a centimeter outside. This will be ball one now, so we get set now for the one two. Vowinkle sends it. This will be chopped down the third baseline. Foul ball. The count remains 1 2.
Bowlink will get set for the one-two pitch once more. The wind up and sends it. This is going to be hit and chopped down to the third baseman. Stella Gaina sends it over to Tyler Rogers, and that is out number three, and this will retire the side. Stella Gaina to Rogers' connection works again for the Wildcats as we get set to go for the bottom of the ninth inning. The Wildcats will lead off the bottom of the ninth with Ryan Curtis, Bradley White the second, and Aaron Stelaganis. The Wildcats want to put this one away before it gets too late. But with that being said, we'll take a quick break here, folks. I want to thank you again for tuning in tonight on Web Sports Broadcasting. I'm Bridger Webb coming to you from Wayne Yancey Field. And if you like what you're listening to and would like this for your school sports, you can email us for any booking inquiries at websportsbroadcasting at yahoo.com. Once again, you can email us for business inquiries at webs, W-E-B-B-S, sportsbroadcasting at yahoo.com. And you can follow us on Twitter at webs play by play. You can DM us as well for any booking inquiries. Once again, that's at Webb's Play-By-Play, W-E-B-B-S, Play-By-Play on Twitter. We'll take a quick break here, folks, and we'll be right back for the bottom of the ninth inning. You're watching Web Sports Broadcasting. Welcome back to Wayne Yancey Field, folks. This is Caden Smith pinch hitting tonight. Now Smith with a big swing and a miss that will give him the 1-1 one, one count. Smith gets set with a big swing and another miss. Strike number two to lead off the bottom of the ninth. We're still tied two apiece here between the Vanguard Knights and the Forest High School Wildcats. Smith smacks this one out into left center. The shortstop is there to make the play. Great effort out there by the shortstop on that one. So this will be the first out for the inning. This will send Bradley White the second back onto the plate. He'll have bases empty and one away. His first pitch will be ball number one. Second pitch will be sort of low. This will be ball two. White sends this one high into the sky. And the shortstop is out there to make the play again. And this will retire Bradley White back into the dugout. Aaron Stella Gannis now. Coming on to the plate here for the Wildcats. Base is empty, two away at the bottom of the ninth. And he will take strike number one. <laughs> Stella Gannis will check a little bit. As this will be ball number one. And a big swing and a miss will be strike two. And Stella Gaines is behind the count now, one to two with two away. Base is empty at the bottom of the ninth. And he'll smack this one over into right field. This will be a base hit. And he will not try for extra bases. This will be a single for Stella Gaines. And the third baseman once again finds his way onto the base. This will be his fourth hit tonight as Tyler Thomas, the catcher, coming onto the plate now for the Wildcats. He walked in the seventh inning. He walked in the first and had a single in the third. 
As this first pitch will be strike one. Thomas has a Steleganus on first. Two away at the bottom of the ninth. And the attempt to pick off Steleganus is no good. Steleganus is creeping out looking to steal yet another base tonight. And he's in on his way and takes a slide. And he will be safe at second. Yet another stolen base by Aaron Steleganus. He will advance over to second and gets into scoring position. As Tyler Thomas just needs a decent enough base hit and this game is over with. So he gets ready for the 1-1. Make that the 2-1. Thomas now for the 2-1. Takes a hit out to right field. Looks like the right fielder is there to make the play, and he does, and this will retire the side. And we're going into double-digit innings, folks. These two teams are certainly going at it for each other. And they're, they're going to need a lot more innings than, uh, than originally required. Well, we're going into the top of the 10, folks. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back. You're watching Web Sports Broadcasting. Welcome back to Wayne Yancey Field, folks. We're getting ready to lead off the 10th inning. Top of the 10th, make that. This is Cody Antonucci to lead off the 10th, and he'll bunt this one over to Stella Gaines, who will throw it over in time to Tyler Rogers. This will be a quick out number one. As we get ready now for Brian Long. Brian Long gets set to go. The center fielder, number 15. Brady Vowinkle still on the mound for the Wildcats. He'll send this one in. This will be called strike one. Vowinkle gets set for the 0-1 pitch. Long sends this one out way out to right field. And Ryan Curtis is there to make the play. This will be out number two. This will send Long back to the dugout. Coming back on plate now will be Carson Lindsay, the designated hitter number 20. He's got bases empty and two away here at the top of the 10th. Come on, Carson! But Winkle sends this one. It'll be hit out into right field, way beyond the foul line. We get set to go for the 0-1. Vo Winkle sends this one. They're going to call this one strike two. We get set to go for the 0-2 now. And Lindsey calls time. We'll step out of the box real fast. Lindsay steps back in. The Vowinkle takes the pitch, and this will be high and outside. This will be ball number one. So Lindsay now will face a one and two pitch. Base is empty once again. Two away here at the top of the tenth. Vowinkle sends this one. It'll be hit out into left field, and left fielder is there to make the play, and this will retire the side. And we get set to go for the bottom of the 10th. Wildcat defense coming up big there. They retired the side relatively quickly. Now if the Wildcats just need their offense to come up with something else here. 
little unsuccessful in their previous at-bats, obviously, as we're still playing the game here, going into the bottom of the 10th. Now, the next game for the Vanguard Knights will be at Lakanto High School this coming Tuesday on April 20th. That'll be at 6.30 p.m. And for the Forest High School Wildcats, they're playing a game tomorrow at high noon against Lincoln High School. That'll be part of the five-game home stretch here to end the season for the Wildcats. Tyler Rogers will be the batter to lead off the bottom of the 10th for the Wildcats. <laughs> Rogers will check a swing in time. This will be called ball one. Second pitch will be in the dirt. And outside, ball number two. As Tyler Rogers, the first baseman, gets set for the 0-2. This pitch will be uh, also low and inside. It'll hit the bottom of the fence here in front of us. This will be ball number three. Rodgers gets set to go for the 3-0. And this will be ball four, and Tyler Rodgers will walk his way over to first. Trevor Murray, the second baseman, coming on plate now for the Wildcats. As NWA's Express Yourself plays over the speakers here at Wayne Yancey Field, we get ready to go. Murray's got a runner on first, and no outs here at the bottom of the 10th. This will be called ball number one. Attempt to pick off the runner over at first will be unsuccessful. Now this is Mason Laredo out on first right now for the Wildcats. This will be ball number two for Trevor Murray. So he's got a 2-0 count right now as Mason Laredo steps outside looking to perhaps steal. And he will, that will not be the case. As Murray gets a piece of this one, this will be a foul ball. We get ready for the 2-1. Murray gets set. He bunts this one. And he's able to get the ball in time over to first. So Trevor Murray will walk his way back over to the uh, dugout, but meanwhile, Mason Laredo out on first will advance over to second base. This is Harrison Pesola, the center fielder now for the Wildcats. Solo was ready for the 1-0. Pitcher had other things in mind as he was looking back behind him at second base. I'll send this one. This will be strike number one.
Pitch sent Pesola's way will be called strike number two. So he gets ready for the one-two now. It's runner on second, one away at the bottom of the tenth inning. Pesola smacks this one out into right center. And the center fielder is there to make the play. And the wonky throw back in field nearly went awry, but they will keep the runner on second as Pesola will be the out, second out. Making way now for Ty Moody. Moody gets set, hits this one out high into low center field. And the center fielder is there to make the play, and this will retire the side. And we're going to need some more innings, folks. We're going into the 11th inning, still tied at two. And we'll be right back, folks. You're watching Web Sports Broadcasting. Welcome back to Wayne Yancey Field. We get set to lead off the top of the 11th inning. This is the pitcher number five, Jake Tompkins. Fowickle sends this one a little low. Tompkins gets set now for the 1-0. Tompkins smacks this one out into right field. And Ryan Curtis is there to make the play. This will be out number one. Setting out Michael Long, the first baseman, number 16. Oh, uh, no, I think he needs 50. 20 is not enough for him. First baseman Michael Long gets set to go here. He's got one away. Base is empty at the top of the 11th. These two teams are really taking themselves to the limits here tonight. There's a big swing and a miss will be strike number one. And you couldn't have asked for a better game between these two rivals. As uh, again, we are now in the top of the 11th inning. Is he able to get a piece of this one over to the second baseman? And they're going to call this one safe as Michael Long just squeezes his way into the first base. Kylan Carter, number 18, on plate now for the Knights. He had a strikeout in the eighth inning. So right now he's got a runner on first and one away. There's Vowinkle on the mound getting set to go. Attempt to pick off is unsuccessful. Carter gets set. Takes a swing and hits this one out into right center and this one's going to be hit for a base hit this one will drop for a base hit rather but this is only going to be a single this will advance michael long over to second As number 11, Braden Ballard, the right fielder, comes back on. Got a runner on first and second. And one away here at the top of the 11th. A runner in scoring position, a dangerous situation here for the Wildcats. This one's going to get called strike number one. We get set to go for the 0-1. And time will get called. 
Ballard will step out real fast. Bo Winkle on the mound gets set to go. Ballard set now with a wild pitch will advance the runners. And the Knights are getting 90 feet closer to potentially taking this game. Not the situation the Wildcats were needing. As Braden Ballard will come back to the plate with a 1-1 count. Has a runner on second and third at the one away here at the top of the 11th. We are tied 2-2. Knights have the opportunity to take this one right out of the fingertips of the Wildcats. Bo Winkle gets set to go. The windup sends it. Is he'll get just a little piece of this one. It'll be fouled away just beyond the first base line. Over into the Knights dugout. We get set to go now for the one-two pitch. Come on, Braden. Come on, boys. Braden Ballard gets set, hits this one. Over to the third baseman. And this is going to be called safe at home. And the Vanguard Knights are going to take the lead here late into this baseball game. Michael Long coming on home from third. And this will give the Knights the lead right now. Come on, Bobby. They lead 3-2 to two at the top of the 11th. With still just one away, they will have runners on the corners making way for Bobby Gattuso. Now, Forest head coach Jed Yancey will call a quick timeout and have a little powwow on the mound here for the Wildcats. We'll take a quick break here, folks. We'll be right back. You're watching Web Sports Broadcasting. Knights lead 3-2 to two late in the game. All right, we're back at Wayne Yancey Field, getting ready to go as Bobby got two, so the catcher, number nine, gets set to go. So right now he's got run around the corners, one away, top of the 11th, and his team right now leads three to two over the Wildcats right now. And it looks like There's a little bit of a uh, miscommunication there. It looks like uh, perhaps the runner thought that the pitcher had balked at the, bu the uh, bunting opportunity. Oh, the runner from third sprinted on home, but that wasn't the case as they, uh, they threw it back to third base, and that was called the third out. So that's going to do it for the top of the 11th because they picked up two outs on that. So we get set to go for the bottom of the 11th. Right now, the Vanguard Knights leading 3-2 to two over the Wildcats. We'll be right back, folks. You're watching Web Sports Broadcasting. Welcome back to Wayne Yancey Field. Get ready for the bottom of the 11th. This is number three, Connor DeGeorge, leading off for the Wildcats. First pitch sent his way is inside. Be ball one. Second pitch will be ball two. Third pitch will be ball three. So the George is ahead of the count here, 3-0 to lead off the bottom of the 11th. And this will be ball four, and the George is on his way to first base on a walk. This will make way now for the right fielder, number 12, Ryan Curtis. Curtis has a runner on first. He'll 
He'll bunt this one. Curtis is sprinting over to the first baseline. And he's safe at first. And the runner advances to over to second. Ryan Curtis with the bunt, and I've never seen a man sprint any faster than that over to the first baseline. That'll be the eighth hit of the night for the Wildcats. So the Wildcats now will have runners on first and second. And we'll take a quick timeout here. We'll be right back. Players are back to their respective positions. And Bradley White, the second, the shortstop for the Wildcats, coming back onto the plate here. He's got runners on first and second. No outs here at the bottom of the 11th. And he'll bump this one. Everyone will advance. And it looks like he's going to have able to run. It's going to be a wild pitch. First Raider comes in on first and comes in. And the walk-off is in. The walk-off is in. And the Forest High School Wildcats will win the game on an error. The Wildcats off of the bunt. Bradley White the second off of the bunt. The Knights had it in time, but the first baseman was unable to get a grip on it, and that will send the runners from second and third on home, and that will give the Wildcats the two necessary runs to take this one out of the hands of the Vanguard Knights. What an exciting way to end this game. What an exciting way to continue this rivalry between these two teams, and what an exciting game to call. So that's it. The Wildcats will win this one 4-3 to three over the Vanguard Knights in 11 innings. What a game. And the series between these two teams are now tied for the season 1-1. Hopefully they will uh, be able to see each other perhaps in the postseason. But ladies and gentlemen, from Wayne Yancey Field at Forest High School in Ocala, Florida, my name is Bridger Webb. Thank you folks so much for tuning in tonight. Now, if you enjoyed what you listened to tonight, you can email us for booking inquiries at websportsbroadcasting at yahoo.com. Again, that's at websportsbroadcasting at yahoo.com for any business inquiries. You can also follow us on Twitter at websplayplay, and you can DM us on Twitter for any booking inquiries as well. Vanguard Knights' next game will be at Lacanto High School this coming Tuesday, April 20th at 630 and the Forest High School Wildcats will take a quick power nap and be right back here at 12 o'clock noon tomorrow taking on Lincoln High School. And, folks, it's been an honor. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We'll be back here next week, and we will see you then. Have a great night, everybody.